guys welcome back to my channel so today I'm gonna be doing my October wrap-up I read 20 books in October it was just the best time I read so much horror and romance I really loved most of what I read but before I dive in and talk about all the books this video is being sponsored by book of the month so book of the month is a really great and affordable book service where every month you get a selection of five brand new hardcover fiction that you can choose from. They work really hard to curate a wide selection of books and the best part is that you can skip at any time and you won't be charged if that month you don't like any of the choices. And they also offer a bunch of add-on books that you can add to your box every month. So here are the selections for November. I am so excited about a lot of these. We have A Little Hope by Ethan Joella which takes place in this small town in Connecticut and follows the lives of all of these neighbors as they confront Everyday Desires, The Family by Naomi Kupitsky. This is a historical fiction novel set in Brooklyn and follows the decades-long friendship between these two women bound by the sins of their fathers. Then we have The Collective by Alison Galen, which is probably the one that I'm the most excited for. This is a thriller about revenge and the wrath of mothers. It's about a group of mothers who have all lost their child and band together to get revenge and justice. You guys know how much I love a revenge story. This sounds totally up my alley. Then we have a romance called How to Marry Keanu Reeves in 90 Days by Hay M. Jackson. And this is about a woman who believes that she is destined to be with the one and only Keanu Reeves. And she finds out that he is now engaged and her and her best friend travel across the country to find him and convince him not to get married until she possibly realizes that the perfect man for her has been right there all along. This sounds so cute. And then finally, we have another book that I've been so excited for and that is Keeper of the Night by Kylie Lee Baker. This is a YA fantasy book about a woman who is on a journey to impress the goddess of death and it's a story of magic and monsters. It sounds like it's gonna be a great fantasy book. And then two of the add-ons that they have for this month are Will by Will Smith, which is a memoir all about his life. And then My Body by Emily Rajkowski, which is a collection of essays about our culture's commodification of women's bodies. So if you use my code Riley, you can get your first box for just $9.99, which is such a steal. And thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. So I have 20 books here to talk about. I don't really know. How I'm gonna organize this. I think I'll just kind of jump around a bit. Most of these books I have talked about in other videos. I vlogged myself reading most of these. I guess I'll start with one that I haven't talked about at all and that is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This is my most disappointing read of the month. I am so disappointed by this. I thought that this was gonna be my perfect book and it just wasn't. It really failed in a lot of aspects for me. So essentially this is a dark academia book set at this all girls school where this girl is returning to school after a year away because her girlfriend died the previous year. So she took some time off and now she's returned and she sort of gets caught up in some of the like dark sinister things that led to her girlfriend's death. She sort of like finds herself back in that. So there were a lot of things about this book that didn't work for me. The main thing being the way that I had always heard people talk about this book was that it's about witches. It's a dark academia about witches and that is such a lie. It is such a lie. All of y'all who said that, you owe me money. You owe me money because that is not true. <laughs> yeah, it's not about witches. It's, it's not and I don't know why y'all said that. I felt like there were only two characters in this book of any substance. All the other characters felt very one-dimensional. I feel like the dark academia setting was purely used for aesthetics. I don't really, it, like it just didn't feel like it was there for any purpose other than to be a dark academia book. I also felt like this should have been adult. These characters read as adult. And so the fact that they were teenagers was just like bizarre to me. They were drinking old fashions. They were making themselves old fashions. Like, I'm not here to deny that maybe there's like some 16 year old girl out there who does in fact willingly choose to drink an old fashioned. 
but I'm sorry, no. It just didn't make sense, okay? Why, like, it didn't make sense. And it was boring. I will say that I did like the last maybe 30 pages. I liked where it went. I just feel like it took way too long to get there. So I think that I, I'm giving this two stars. Like, it wasn't the worst thing that I've read, but it wasn't good. The book was kind of just a, like a major letdown for me. On the flip side, a book that was not a major letdown for me was Sea of Ruin by Pam Godwin. You watched my TBR redo. You will know that I love this book. I'm obsessed with this book. This was it. This was it. She's the girl. This is a dark historical pirate romance. And I want to emphasize that it's dark because I got a lot of messages from people who were like, oh, I only read YA. Can I read this? Do you think this is a great place to start with romance? The answer is yes and no, but no going into it that it is dark and it has a lot of dark themes. This had everything that I've been wanting from a pirate book. I have never found a like genuinely great pirate book that gives me all of the vibes of Pirates of the Caribbean and Black Sails. It's just like quintessentially pirates and fun and that's exactly what this was. It also had a, an incredible romance. A really big theme for my reading in October was me having specific things that I thought I didn't like in books and then reading things that have them and liking them and being proven wrong. And one of the things was this book. There was a non-consensual scene between the hero and the heroine. And that is always something that I thought was like a deal breaker for me in a romance. But I found it really fascinating the way that Pam Godwin handled the situation and like took these characters to a really, really dark place, but then was able to work through it and like bring them back. I really loved this book. I highly, highly recommend this. And obviously, I gave this five stars. It's gonna be one of my favorite romances this year. The next book I read is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. This is a YA haunted house book that I really, really liked. This book was really great. Um, it's probably one of the like creepier haunted house books that I've read. I feel like this is sort of the combination of When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole and Horrid by Katrina Leno. I feel like if you put these two books into one, you would get this. And I gave this four stars. I really, really Really enjoyed this. It was super creepy. There were moments where I was getting creeped out. It also made me very angry. Like the the anger that I was feeling about a certain child character. I've never wanted to drop kick a kid more. And it also surprised me. I'm very rarely surprised in books, but this one surprised me. There was like something that I wasn't expecting to happen that happened. And I liked the direction that the book took. I think that my only critique would be the ending. It ends so abruptly. I don't have a problem with like an open ending or like questions that still haven't been answered. However, when I say that it's abrupt, it literally ends in the middle of what I feel like was the climax and there's no resolution. Like I just, I just wanted like maybe five more pages. I was listening to it on audio and when the audiobook ended, I literally had to go grab the physical book and look at it because I thought that my audiobook was just cut off. But no, that was just how it ended. So that's my honestly like my only critique about it, but I really enjoyed it other than that. The next three books were all thrillers that I read in my thriller reading vlog. I've talked about these books a lot because I did a part one where I talked about the first chapters and then I did a part two where I read the entire books so I won't go too in depth on these but to give you like my quick thoughts about them For Your Own Good was I think my favorite of the three well I can't remember if I said The Passengers was my favorite or For Your Own Good was my favorite I feel like now having it been like a month later For Your Own Good is my favorite of the three this is the one that I still think about a lot it follows a teacher at this like kind of prestigious academy and he very much has Joe Goldberg vibes but as basically he is just very narcissistic very much thinks that he is God's gift to the world he takes it upon himself to help his students but the ways in which he helps them are extreme and insane. This book is very wild. It was very fun. Um, I gave it four stars. I definitely think if you like you, the show or the book, you will enjoy this. Then we have The Passengers by John Mars, which very much reads like a Black Mirror episode. This takes place in a future where there are 100% self-driving cars. One day, eight different people get carjacked and this um, anonymous terrorist takes over their vehicles and sets their cars on a crash collision course. And not only that, but has cameras in all of the cars to live broadcast the feed to the world and forces a group of government officials to make life and death decisions 
about these people based on very basic information like their gender, their race, their economic status, their marriage status, just like very basic information. They have to use that to decide who's gonna live and die. It is very much like a social experiment. It posed a lot of really interesting questions and I had a fun time with it. Um, and then the other one that I read was Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which follows this married couple who are on the rocks and they are going to this weekend getaway in this like snowy Scotland hills and they both are keeping secrets from each other. It is wild. The atmosphere is great. This wasn't like a favorite. It was fine. It was fun. I can see why people really, really love this for me. I think I enjoyed the first half better than the second half. It was still a good time. Three stars. Okay, then we have another book that is probably a favorite romance of the whole year. I'm obsessed with this book. And I've been obsessed with this book since I read it. Like, there, not a day has gone by where I haven't intensely thought about this book. And that's Her Soul to Take by Harley LaRoe. So this is a horror, paranormal, demon romance. And for years, I've been saying that I want a genuine horror romance where the horror aspects are just as equal as the romance aspects and I feel like I've never been able to find that. I found some that get close but either the horror is much more important than the romance or the romance is much more important than the horror. I've yet to find something that is like perfect in both aspects but I believe that that's what this is. We're following this girl who is like a paranormal investigator. She has a YouTube channel where she does paranormal investigations and and at the start of this book, she's moving back to her hometown. Little does she know that her hometown is like a paranormal hotspot full of cults who worship dead gods, demons, monsters. Like that town is the hellmouth, basically. She meets this guy on campus who is a security guard and he is like very dark and edgy and they have sort of a rivals with banter kind of relationship. But little does she know, he's actually a demon and he wants to steal her soul. This was so good. Basically when I read this, it was like midnight and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna read one chapter before I go to bed. That was a mistake because I stayed up until like 4 a.m. reading it. I couldn't stop. I, it was so good. And I loved everything about it. The romance was great. There are certain quotes from this book that are so romantic, I can't stop thinking about them. The smut. The smut was fantastic. Loved it. Everything about it, loved it. The plot was great. There was this whole plot with a cult and a dead god and human sacrifices. There were like extremely creepy, disgusting monsters in the woods that totally f freaked me out. The horror elements were great. Like I just cannot say enough good things about this book. I loved it. It made me want to read everything that Harley LaRoe has written. I just can't say enough good things about this book. Read it. It's five stars. This like might be one of my favorite romance of all time. It just, it had everything that I love. The next book that I read was another one that I really, really loved, and that is A Lady of Rootsgrave Manor. This was our group book for Smutathon, and I loved this, and I'm so glad that I think the majority of y'all who read this with us also loved it. This is a reverse harem monster gothic historical romance about this place called Rooksgrave Manor, which is basically this house where monsters can go to have sex with people who want to have sex with monsters. So there are women there who all like sign up for this. They get assigned different monsters and that's like the whole concept. So the main character goes there and gets a harem of these monstrous men. One of them is a vampire. One of them is invisible. There's a golem. This one guy who is kind of like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, but he reminded me more of Venom. Who's the other one? A sphinx. sphinx. That's all five. Okay. And I loved this. This was so much fun. Probably one of the best monster romances that I've read. And I think that this is the first like true reverse harem book that I've read. And I think it has unlocked something in me. My only critique about this book was that for the length, there was not nearly enough plot and way too much sex, which for me to say that, me, you guys know me, for me to say that there was too much sex and not enough plot, I feel like that's really saying something because I never have that issue. I just like, I just wanted a little more plot 
for the length of this book, I mean, this is like a decent sized book. It's 350 pages. It just needed a little more plot, like just a little, a little sprinkle, and then it would have been great. But I did really, really enjoy it. I cannot wait for the second book. Definitely recommend that. I feel like I'm all over the place with these books. If you want a, like a quintessential look into what my book taste is, I feel like this video is it because the next one that I read is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke by Eric LaRocca, which is the most disgusting book that I've ever read. It is foul. It is gross. I don't recommend it, but I gave it five stars. Does it make sense? No, it doesn't make sense. This was disgusting, but it was five stars. This is a little horror book that follows these two women in the early 2000s who meet in online chat room and strike up a relationship that is so, so indicative of internet relationships 20 years ago. And they descend into this really dark relationship. There's power plays, there's obsession. I don't know, read it if you want to, I don't recommend it. The next book that I read, I feel like I'm the only person in the world who's liked this book and that is Nothing But Blackened Teeth by Cassandra Kaw. Every single wrap up that I've seen so far where somebody read this, <laughs> they hated it and gave it one star, but I enjoyed it. I don't know. This follows a group of friends who are gathering for a wedding. The wedding is taking place at this haunted mansion in Japan that has a legend about this ghost bride who was buried alive there and is waiting for her dead husband to appear. Here's the thing. I watched so many reviews of people who did not like this and everything that they said, I'm like, yeah, I agree with that. I agree, that makes sense, but I still liked it. I think that the number one critique that I've seen about this is that all the characters suck and are annoying and are unlikable, which is true. I don't know, I feel like this is maybe part of a larger conversation, but I don't need to like a character as a person in order to like them as a character. I see all the time people will be like, oh, I didn't like this character because they were annoying. And I'm just thinking, yeah, that was the point. They were supposed to be annoying. <laughs> or when people complain about unlikable main characters, like, yeah, that was the point. <laughs> but I guess for some people, they need to really like characters as people first in order to like them as characters. I just don't read that way. And I see it all the time with, with people talking about, like when people love villains and they're like, oh, you love this villain? You must love mass murder. You must be a mass murder apologist. I'm sorry, what? I don't know, this is maybe like a tangent, which is, is totally unrelated to this book because these characters sucking is valid. And if you didn't like them, that's valid. I'm not disagreeing with that. I just think it's interesting how some people enjoy villains or unreliable characters or annoying characters or bad characters. I don't know. I don't have a conclusion to that thought. It was just a tangent. So the next book is Hooked by Emily McIntyre. This is a dark romance Peter Pan retelling that is a romance between Hook and Wendy. It's contemporary, so it's not fantasy. I loved this book. I loved this so much more than I was expecting to. And this is another book that I've seen like people either loved or they hated. Personally, I loved it. James Hook is insane. He's one of the most insane love interests that I have read. There's a scene in here. He literally rips out somebody's tongue just because they called the main character a bitch. Like, valid, but a little insane. I loved him and I loved this romance. Basically, Hook is on a mission to get revenge on the man who ruined his life and that just so happens to be Wendy's father. So he decides to sort of get close to her in order to get revenge on her dad and they end up falling in love. This is a dark romance. It has a uh, captor captive elements to it. It has a little bit of like a mafia element. He's not in the mafia, but he's part of this like large like crime organization. It's very smutty and I loved it. I cannot wait for the next book. I have no idea who it's gonna be following, but I'm like sold on this author now. The next four books, I'm just gonna talk about really quickly because they're all like very, very short novellas that I read for Smutathon. I vlogged that whole week with some of the other books that I've already talked about, but since these were all like under 50 page novellas, there's not much that I can say about them. Just to give you my quick thoughts. So we have Scream For Us by Molly Doyle, which takes place on Halloween and this woman meets these three guys who are all dressed up as like horror slasher characters. So like Ghostface, Michael Myers, and Jason Voorhees. It's wild. It's a roller coaster. It goes off the rails. Like they have sex in a burning building while there's people dying around them. It's insane, but I loved it. I gave it four stars. Then we have Skin by Vita Vice, which is a romance between a gargoyle and a banshee. 
and basically anytime she touches somebody's skin they kind of like imprint on her she can feel their feelings and it sticks with her forever so she covers herself head to toe in like this cat suit and wears gloves and like never touches anybody because it's it's like very intense to always be feeling someone else's emotions and her co-worker is this gargoyle and during one of their jobs they're getting shot at and he grabs her ungloved hand and so now she can feel his feelings and she now knows that he has a lot of feelings towards her and this was so good i cannot wait for this to be a full-length book it's gonna be great and then another one from Aveda device that i read is headless this is extremely short it's only 14 pages i think that eventually it's going to be a longer book which i'm very excited for because i was intrigued however since this was only 14 pages there wasn't a lot to go off of basically it's a polyamorous retelling of the legend of sleepy hollow where there is this thruple one night on halloween one of the guys disappears and they're grieving his loss but then this like headless shadowed figure shows up at their house and they realize that it's him but he can only come to them one night a year so every year it becomes a tradition that they wait for him and they're able to be with him for just that night in this like shadow form and i liked it i was very intrigued i love loved the writing so i am excited to see this eventually become a longer book and then we have games we play by dana eastley which i loved I loved this. There was a moment where I was reading it where I was kind of like, um, I don't know. But then I learned some new things about myself. Maybe things I didn't necessarily want to learn, but now I know. But basically this is about a famous faceless gamer and the main character is a woman who's going to interview him. They end up having a steamy little time together. His name is the Joker. I love him and I can't wait for more books in this series following his little friend group because I loved all of them as well. This is just so great. Highly recommend. Very, very steamy. Then we have another disappointing book and that is Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. I read two books from Grady Hendrix prior to this and I loved both of them so I was very excited for this. However, this was boring. That's like all I can say about it. It was boring. And I do know that this was one of his earlier works, so he's obviously improved a lot, but I didn't like this. It's about a haunted IKEA furniture store where there's like ghosts, it was just boring. Like, I have nothing to say about it. Then we have Knights of the Mannequin by Stephen Graham Jones, which is a horror novella that I feel like it's just so hard to just talk about the plot of this book because it's really, like, not at all what you think it's going to be. Probably the best slasher that I've read. It's a slasher. That's all I'm going to say about it. It's a slasher. I think Stephen Graham Jones is a really captivating writer, and I sort of felt the exact same way about The Only Good Indians as I did about this book, so I'm really excited to read all of his other books, his whole backlist, his new release, everything. Okay, then I read Rolling in the Deep by Mira Grant, which is the prequel to um, Into the Drowning Deep, which is one of my favorite horror books ever about killer mermaids, and this is just a short novella. It's a little taste, and I loved this. I gave it five stars. Basically, it's about a mockumentary crew who are going out to the Mariana Trench to prove that there are mermaids there. They don't really care if the mermaids are actually there. They're just pretending, but they turn up there and turns out there are mermaids and they all die. And these mermaids are my favorite creatures of any book ever. I love them so much. What I really like about this book and Into the Drowning Deep is there are moments where you get the mermaid's perspective and it's so interesting. I would happily be killed by one, but I think my ideal life, I've, I've decided that if I am to be reincarnated one day, I would like to come back as a killer mermaid stalking my prey. That would be the life. But I would settle to be happily killed by one. So then the last book that I read is Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. This is about a group of girls who hold a seance and one of the friends gets possessed by the goddess of sin. So they go on this kind of journey to help their friend and also protect her from a priest who is trying to exercise her. I loved this. This was amazing. It gave me the craft meets Jennifer's body in the best ways. It was so much fun. I loved this goddess. She ate people's sins. If that just doesn't sound like the coolest thing ever, this was amazing. Five stars. Those are all of the books that I read in October. Like I said, it was a great reading month. I read so many amazing things. Even though I did have a couple disappointments, overall, I gave a lot of five stars, which doesn't happen that often. So I'm very happy with that. So if you made it this far, I feel like this is going to be a really long video. <laughs> but thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!